right in the first act of any screenplay is tough work. Pixar's new movie, Turning Red, is a great example of how to do it right. Let's dive into how it's done with co-writer and director Domi Shi. It's great to be here. Domi Shi has worked on so many great movies and she also wrote and directed the Oscar winner short film, Bao. Together, we'll break down the first 20 minutes of Turning Red and discover what makes it work so well so that you can apply it to your story. And if you dream of one day of writing for Pixar, stick around until the end because Domi will share the key to move closer to your goal. The opening of your screenplay is one of the most important parts of any movie. Naturally, it will be one of the hardest to write. That was always like a challenge for us. It's like all of this setup has to happen and make her appealing, make her funny and, and fun, but also give her like issues as well. They can't be too outgoing and too perfect because then it's like, what is the movie about? By the way, if you're new here, I'm screenwriter Pietro Schito and this is Write for Animation, the YouTube channel that helps you become a professional animation screenwriter. Subscribe for more tips and lessons on screenwriting. According to author Sidfield in his book Screenplay, a great act one should establish the theme of your story, hook the audience, introduce your main characters and their ordinary life, present the inciting incident, set up the protagonist's want and need, and finally, your first turning point, the dramatic premise that sets the story in motion. Turning Red opens with a series of photographs and a monologue. Honoring your parents sounds great, but if you take it too far, well, you might forget to honor yourself. We're just one minute in and the film has already established the theme, honoring your parents versus honoring yourself. Next, May unexpectedly breaks the fourth wall and introduces herself. I'm May Lin Lee. We decided to like have her break the fourth wall, uh, like having a character just talk directly to camera. It is an unexpected element that helps the movie hook the audience. Our goal was to, was to make the audience fall in love with May as soon as you meet her. And that's like in that opening when she's walking down the street and kind of declaring who she is and what she's about and introducing her friends. Notice how their first introduction perfectly summarizes who they are. Miriam is chill and always on May's side. Priya is quiet and pragmatic and Abby is cutesy but aggressive. As May's day goes on, we see she's a confident goofball and an overachiever even if a bit annoying to other people. An overachieving dork narc. I accept and embrace all labels. The girls leave school and stop at a convenience store to take a look at the nuclear. Damon. May dismisses him. Her boy priorities lie elsewhere. May I remind you what real men look like? May and her friends want to go to a Four Town concert. But tickets to Four Town are like a bajillion dollars. May suddenly leaves. Her friends beg her to stay. Hey. But she keeps heading home, clearly scared of being late. She's so brainwashed. Now we get to see the other side of her life. Mimi, there you are. Hey, mom, you're 10 minutes late. What happened? Ming is controlling and has high expectations for May. Today, honor student. Tomorrow, UN Secretary General. And you're introduced to May and her mom and their dynamic and, and Ming is like being very like bossy. As May and her mother take care of the temple they run, their connection to red pandas is explained, a crucial element in the story. May leads a double life inside and outside of her house. Her outside life is free and fun, whereas her inside life is stifled and strict. We needed to show what was broken about uh, May and her relationship with her mom. Oh my gosh, who are these hip hoppers? But also we needed to show like what May's issue was, which is that she is kind of like under her mom's thumb, but like completely delusional too. After that, May is doing her homework and starts doodling. Kind of looks like Devin. She slowly realizes that maybe she might be into him. It was also like important for it to be funny too. I mean, it, it's embarrassing, but I just also just love how funny it is. Like her weird like facial expression, like when she like draws right. that dragon, she goes like. <laughs> <laughs> that is until Ming comes into her room and finds her drawing. Hey, babe. <gasps> In any story, it's important to ask yourself. What is the worst thing that could happen to my protagonist? I just 
drew from my own experience, like what, what would be the most embarrassing thing for me when I was 13? And like, oh my gosh, if my mom found my secret sketchbook, which I totally had under my bed, thinking of like putting myself back to when I was 13 and 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 just like that experience of, of like sheer terror and embarrassment, uh, if, if that ever happened. And actually like that scene was like one of the few scenes that I got to storyboard, which it was like one of my favorite scenes. The worst thing that could happen comes true when her mother confronts the clerk with May's drawings. So embarrassing. But this event is the inciting incident of the story. The inciting incident is an event that starts your protagonist's journey into conflict. It is the first step on the character's journey. When an inciting incident occurs, it must be a dynamic, fully developed event, not something static or vague. This catastrophic event also marks Ming as the antagonist in May's life and a force to be reckoned with. Is there anything else I should know about, Mei Mei? Nope. All good. The antagonist is the opposite force working against the protagonist and creating the main conflict. The bigger your antagonist is, the stronger your protagonist must also be or become. To learn more about how to write an iconic antagonist, look forward to our upcoming video all about villains. Subscribe, you don't want to miss it. You are her pride and joy, so I like it! Like at the end where she's kind of chastising herself, like, oh, stupid, stupid, like, why would you do that? Like, she's not blaming her mom, she's blaming herself. And we also needed this, like, it just felt right to have this, like, very emotional, traumatic thing to kind of kick off the panda arriving in the next uh, scenes. May wants to make her mother proud. She wants to honor her parents. May also wants to go to the Fort Town concert and hang out with her friends, but her life is stifled by her mother. We can infer May needs to gain some power over her own life. She needs to honor herself. A common question is, what is the difference between the inciting incident and the first turning point? They are both major beats in your first act, but they are not the same. The inciting incident is the beginning of your character's journey, the first thing in your character's life that goes astray or goes extremely well. Your inciting incident will lead you into the first turning point, which is the point of no return, the moment of the story that takes your character into an unstoppable journey. It is also the transition into Act 2. May has a nightmare. <gasps> And when she wakes up, she has turned into a giant red panda. Here we are, it's the 20 minute mark and the story has now properly started. Yes! With that development, we finally enter Act 2 and the story is set in motion. So during Act 1, Domi and her team established the theme of the story, honoring your parents versus honoring yourself, had our expectations shaken hooking us into the story, introduce our protagonist and her ordinary life, establish the dynamic between Mei and Ming, build confrontation between Mei and Ming, created a clear want and a clear need for the character, and finally, took the main character through a dramatic change in her life, turning into a red panda. Turning red checks all the boxes of what makes a great beginning to a movie, and it does it with style and fun. Before we get to Domi's career advice, tell me in the comments, what's an animated movie whose beginning you love? For more Turning Red, download our free PDF guide where we break down the film's first act beat by beat. Link down below. So I will listen to you for hours, but I know we're running out of time. So uh, one last question is, what is the general advice you would give to somebody that has the dream of writing a movie for Pixar? I'm asking for a friend here. Ooh. Oh, um, yeah, character. It's all about character and creating characters that you care about, that you want to go on a journey with. Yeah, I mean, plot is going to change so much, but I think if you can like find your character early, what they want and like a couple of key like strong and quirky or unique personality traits that you can like use to define them um like that that's huge because then they feel so real that they can kind of have a life on their own and you can follow them on a story and stuff so yeah thank you so much domi and thank you for watching this is pietro from write for animation now go write something great